Good evening, good evening. Good evening, Jerusalem and friends. I certainly want to thank God for you on this uh, uh, Wednesday as we uh, pick up again for another Bible study. And prayerfully, you are uh, traveling along well uh, as we talk about this word journey tonight in your own journey. And uh, certainly grateful for uh, this day uh, that the Lord uh, has made. And uh, may we rejoice and be, and be glad in it. Remember this coming Saturday is our new members orientation. Uh, slowly gonna develop the branding and moniker of Peace University. Jerusalem, uh, Jerusalem, Gerald City of, and Salem means peace, so Jerusalem means city of peace. And uh, so we want to uh, take advantage of all that Jerusalem has to offer. And so our Peace University, but it is a great time for those who have connected with our church uh, to become assimilated and get the tools that will help you uh, to kind of flourish as a member and a believer of the Lord Jesus. So that's this Saturday at 10 a.m. And uh, this is our first one since uh, COVID. So inviting all of those who have become a part of our church since COVID uh, to be a part, amen? Um, yeah, our Youth Workers Planning Meeting is also this Saturday at 4.30. That'll be on site, 4.30 uh, this Saturday. Our All Leaders Meeting will be that next Saturday, August 26th. I need you all there. Be praying for our church as we uh, prepare to plan for 2024. Um, we have plans, but it's God's purposes that prevail. And so uh, we want to continually align what we are doing uh, with where, where the Lord is blessing, where the Lord's hand is. And so uh, we want to uh, be discerning. Uh, remember, our church anniversary is coming up around the corner. Have exciting uh, time and events that are planned for that. And be uh, letting you know about those things in the near future. Uh, but we asked every member for $125 uh, by faith, and $125 is not a, a, not a lot per se. Um, at, at about uh, uh, eight, seven or eight dollars a month over 12 months, um, I believe will get you to to 125. That may not be totally totally true. That's probably not totally true. Ten. Let's just say ten. <laughs> yeah, ten. Ten to get you there, and. Uh, uh, but but anyways, um, uh, I pray that you would uh, continue to support our church um, uh, in those asks. And you have you can only do what you can do, so we ask that you would do it by faith. Remember, if you have any announcements, please make sure you call our church and uh, or send an email. And we need those announcements that need to be read publicly uh, in the office by Wednesday, no later than Wednesday afternoon. Um, and uh, that helps us uh, to prepare, all right? Continue to keep our church in prayer, keep one another lifted in prayer, and uh, certainly want to uh, thank God uh, for how he is at work in the midst of, in the midst of our members and our friends. And I want to say again, thank you to all of our friends who view in on a weekly basis, some people uh, encourage me by your words and uh, contributing and being a blessing to our church and to me. And so we just want to say thank you uh, on behalf of uh, myself and the Jerusalem Church family. Let's pray. Father heaven, thank you for your goodness and your grace. Thank you for your word. Pray that um, it would be impacting uh, to our hearts today. Pray you will get glory out of all that is said and done. Thank you for how you are at work in our lives. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we've been um, in this series, and I guess I'll call, like I said, this uh, uh, part of uh, Wednesday night or season or whatever, uh, Sunday school for the rest of us, Sunday school for the rest of us. And I would encourage you, and I'm very excited about our Sunday school Thank God for our teachers, Sister Joyce Fortberry, Sister Gail Bryant, Deacon Johnny Taylor, Reverend Ray Coleman, uh, Deacon Rudolph Grayer, uh, Sister Iva Smith, 
Uh, Lord have mercy, Sister Daphne Simpo, um, Sister Angela Edwards, Sherilyn Smith, um, Sister Hortense Moody, and if I got, forgot to call someone's name, charge it to my head, uh, not to my heart, but I'm so grateful for our uh, Sunday school, Shea Bracey. Um, um, but um, it, it's really an opportunity for us to go deeper uh, in engaging the word. And uh, perhaps you were not there this past Sunday, but I encourage you to be there this Sunday as um, we kind of move forward um, in, uh, in, the, uh, in the word, all right? And um, I, I just realized, <laughs> I just realized something, that as I'm up here, that uh, the, the lesson that I have <laughs> is uh, the lesson that will be taught this coming Sunday. So uh, hopefully I just shed some light or something for our <laughs> Sunday school teachers, so y'all forgive me. But uh, this past Sunday was actually uh, in First John, or Second John, rather, uh, our past lesson. And so uh, forgive me for that, and uh, Second John. Uh, but let me, let me just share, but encourage you to be there with us. So um, we've been in a series of lessons, this unit. Our every unit is about six weeks, and uh, every unit is a powerful unit. As a matter of fact, we're getting ready to move to a new quarter. Of, of books, and so it's a great time to really hop in uh, for several of our units uh, to grow in the Lord. But this, this particular unit is, is being set apart, set apart for uh, a life lived for God. And um, there's a word, and I've, you've heard me say it over the last few weeks, holiness. Holiness is more than a denomination. Holiness is more than uh, not wearing a, a, a red dress or finger, uh, 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 nail polish. I don't know. There's some people who tell me they kind of grown up in a strict religious background and uh, be that as it made their experience. You know, holiness is more than uh, not listening to um, uh, uh, worldly movies. It's, it's, it's more than that. Uh, and it may include that as well. Um, uh, but but holiness from its very uh, etymology is, uh, is sanctification. And in sanctification, we are set apart. We, we, we particularly become the Lord's use, the Lord's vessels, the Lord's agency. Amen? I um, happen to be a pastor. I believe the Lord called me to preach. The Lord called me to pastor. Uh, give me a shepherd's heart. Give me the assignment of pastoring this church. Um, but the reality is, First uh, Peter uh, chapter 2, he says, you are a royal priesthood. You know, so we believe in the priesthood of, of, of all the believers, the priesthood of the believer, that all of us have been set aside for God's use. Set aside for God's use. And really... That becomes the foundation of what it means to be set apart. Amen? So it is what you do, but it's deeper than what you do. It is an acceptance within our hearts and within our minds that I belong to the Lord. Amen? That I am, am here for, for the Lord's use. And, and, and in a powerful way, God can choose whatever means by which to use us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And sometimes our mind immediately goes to the wor worst of the worst. Amen. But, but God can use you. Because we do know that a part of God using us is, is, is through suffering sometimes, is through sacrifice, is through going through trials as God builds a monumental story to his glory. And in his glory, uh, it, it, the, light shine, the light shines on, the light shines on us uh, because it is evident that we are here uh, of our own testimony that if it had not been for the Lord, it becomes evident to those that are around us what God has done. But, but being set apart for the Lord's use and to live a life for the Lord has to begin in our heart that I belong to him. 
And uh, that is the power of this coming Sunday's upcoming lesson. Amen? That is the power of this Sunday's upcoming lesson, that, that we have been set aside uh, for the Lord's use. And I'm so glad that the Lord gives us witnesses. The Lord gives us witnesses uh, of people who will, who will live that life up. And I, and I want to encourage you uh, and uh, all of you to, to get you somebody. Now, quite naturally, Jerusalem, the Lord has given you somebody. Now, I, I can't help what you think of me. Uh, I can't help what you, what you uh, uh, decline or accept to take advantage of. But his explicit word is that I have given you pastors after my own heart that will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Is your pastor perfect? No. No. We're going to see in the lesson, it's not about perfection. Uh, does your pastor know everything? No. No, no, no. But the, the part that I do know is what makes uh, uh, my role uh, significant as it relates to God's purpose and usefulness of the church and of the pastor in particular. But you ought to, you ought to have you somebody in your life, amen? Uh, uh, not more, I mean, you, 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 not, not just your gossip partner, amen? Not just what you, what you read in the news, amen? Not what you're going to do this weekend. But sometimes we need people in our lives who will both model and point. Who will both model and point. And this is so crucial. We're getting ready for 2024 and planning. But, but more than just putting some dates on a calendar, what, what I want to impress is we need leaders who will lead. And leaders who will lead have to make an internal decision that I want to make myself available for the Lord. I want to make myself available for God to use me and use me to... Uh, be instrumental uh, in the growth and the uh, fellowship, uh, the evangelism, and the worship of, of others who are around me. That God wants to use you to make a difference. Be because if you never get to the place where you accept that you've been set apart, amen, that you've been set apart, then often we will only do things uh, that that are that are just for our comfort. As soon as it becomes uncomfortable, we will check out. As soon as it becomes uncomfortable, we, we will we will stop. We will stop doing it. But if you know you've been set apart, Amen. You you have to keep trusting in the Lord. You have to keep growing, and we're going to see that in this upcoming lesson this week, Amen. And and so the Apostle Paul embodies that. The Apostle Paul embodies that. By his own admission, the chief of sinners, the worst of sinners, amen, in, in whom I am the chief, that, that, that he may be a witness and an example of God's amazing grace. So the last person you ever would think would be the shining example of the Lord Jesus Christ is the Apostle Paul. And, uh, and, and, and the Apostle Paul, he learns that his life is must become a witness to other people. Parents, this is why it's so important for you to be an authentic believer. Amen? This is why it's so important, because the proof is in the pudding. Often, we become people who say, do as I say and not as I do. Amen? <laughs> the religion of the scribes and the Pharisees. Amen? Who, who, will, who will do a lot of, of talking, but don't do a lot of walking. And so the Apostle Paul is, has written this letter to the church in Macedonia, the Philippians, amen? And he writes this letter, and he writes this letter to them because they are struggling with the seeds of not being set apart, amen? Not being set apart. And, uh, in so much that their focus is struggling with being divided in their, in their minds, in their hearts, Amen? Uh, uh, we talked a little, a little bit about this last week in last week's uh, uh, lesson, uh, uh, which I taught about uh, uh, on last Wednesday and the Sunday school lesson from, from uh, uh, the other Sunday, is that because the, the Israel had received the covenant first, 
their relationship with the I am, with the Yahweh, amen, with, with, with the God of Abraham, amen, the God who, who has revealed himself through his word. Because they had such relationship with him, there, there became this, this experience where they were actually communicating that in order to get to God, you got to come through us first, amen, and, and still to this day. People have to th think they got to do a million things to, to get to the Lord, a million things to get to God. Amen. You, you got You got to do this and you got to do that. But but you ought to know that Jesus paid it all and all to him we owe that 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 I I have come that you might have life. Amen. And you might have life more abundantly that I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the father, but by me. And so the Apostle Paul is encouraging, especially this last uh, part of this letter to the Philippian, that your focus ought to be on Christ Jesus. Amen? I can't say that enough. Your focus ought to be on Christ Jesus. When your focus is on Christ Jesus, Peter, as long as Peter kept his eyes on Jesus, he, he, could, he could walk on water. Oh, you don't hear me. You, you got to keep your eyes on Jesus because there's a whole lot of distractions going on uh, in the world. A whole lot of distraction. When, when Jairus goes to Jesus about his daughter, uh, um, um, uh, uh, Jairus has to trust Jesus through a miracle for somebody else. When he gets back to the house, it appears that Jairus' daughter is dead. And, and, and the people are saying, don't waste the master's time. And Jesus has to look intently at Jairus and says, only believe, only believe. Because if you take your eyes off Jesus, you don't know what is going to distract you. You don't know what is, is, is going to keep you. And a whole lot of people are missing out on our faith and our relationship with the Lord because you're so distracted with everything else. You are, you, we, are, we are totally distracted. I was listening to a piece today, and the man said, we, we so attached to our phones, our phones have become us. Every time it ding, every time you see a little <laughs> number on the Facebook Every Lord Jesus have mercy. I'm a pastor. I'm in this world as well. It, we, but we are so distracted. We got to watch our TV show. We got to listen to the radio. We got to see what the uh, past president is doing. What's the new indictment? And we are so inundated that we do not have our eyes on the Lord. And the reason you, got, you need an example is because so much of the world is living that way. Amen. To, to be distracted, to have your attention diverted, to have uh, your heart divided in, in so many different things is the way of this world. But to keep your eyes on Jesus will make you distinct from those that are around you. And the Apostle Paul is encouraging the Philippian church to think that way. And so if you go back and you make Philippians 3 your devotion, over the next few days, I believe when you get around verse 7, verse 7, if you open your Bibles, Philippians 3, he said, but what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Verse 8, yea, doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. And so the Apostle Paul is saying, the goal of my life is Christ Jesus. The goal of my life, amen, is the, is the wisdom and knowledge of Christ Jesus. I, I'm hard-headed, but I want to obey like him. Amen. Sometimes I'm puffed up in my ego, but I want to be humble like him. Sometimes I'm so uh, full of resentment and anger towards those that hurt me, but I want to forgive like him. I wish you'd talk back to me today. Sometimes I can be wrong in my heart, but I want to love like him. Sometimes I can be judgmental towards others, but I want to be compassionate. You don't hear me today. You want to be compassionate compassionate like him. And Paul says that is the pursuit of my life, the pursuit of my life in so much that I count everything else in my life as if it were trash when it comes to the to the knowledge uh, of the Lord of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we do know Paul had other knowledge. He did have other skills. Amen. Paul could build tents. 
Paul was um, from the Sanhedrin. He knew the law backwards and forward. Uh, amen. Paul, Paul, Paul was taught um, uh, by, by, by the elites uh, of, their, of their society. But Paul says, when it, when you, when, if, you, if you're going to line up my credentials, they don't, they don't even stand a chance when it comes to Christ Jesus. Don't even, don't, a, whole, a whole level other category. Just, a, just, another, just another level. If you got Jesus in your, your degree and your, your uh, lodge or your sorority or fraternity and your, your I wish you hear me, your credentials and your, your job. And if, 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 if you just got the Lord as just, just a mix of things, then you, you are robbing yourself of such a great blessing of what your life is really meant to be. Because it is Christ that ought to have the preeminence, the preeminence in our lives. The preeminence. Jesus said, take up your cross, deny yourself, and follow me. He that loveth this life will lose it, but he that will lose their life for my sake and this gospel shall find it. Peter said, Lord, we have left everything. We left everything, Lord, to follow you. There is no one who has given up mother or father or houses or lands for my sake that shall not only reap in the life to come, but shall reap a hundredfold even even in this life. You, You do not lose in your walk with Jesus. You don't lose your influence, the the power you have, the the anointing you have. There's nobody that God needs to have a a, a high IQ to take care of his business. What God needs is somebody who who will be single vision in their eyes and their eyes on the Lord as as as. As you, as you move along through life. And so you are on a journey. And sometimes you got to keep auto-correcting. And that, we're going to get there in a moment. And so Paul, Paul says that. Then he says in verse 10, he says, he says, that I may know him and the powers of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, that, that, that I may be, you know, may conform even, even to his death. I want to live like him. I want to know like him. I, 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 want to, I want to be like Christ in every way. I want to die like him. Not, not necessarily Paul only saying I want to be nailed to a cross. But I do, want to, I do want to be yielded to the Lord. A whole lot of folk, when the Lord comes back and when the Lord comes back into their their lives to, to say this is this is it is a point of man wants a judgment sometimes people people have have died and they can rest well from their labors but we got a whole lot of people the, the end the end of life is in is in places that they don't belong and that's why you can't play with life because life is a gift but life is a gift that we should use to honor the Lord. And so Paul says in verse 10 that I may know him and and uh and 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 uh and so and so he goes on there and and he says in verse 12 and our lesson is where our lesson picks up. So if you have your Bible Philippians 3 and 12, not as though I'd already attained, uh either, either were already perfect. So Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus becomes the standard. Christ Jesus becomes the goal. Christ Jesus becomes the prize. Uh, but, but being honest, I'm not there yet. But I follow after. If that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, and we equal opportunity again, generic, just like uh, last week, a uh, lesson I did in, in uh, Romans 12. Brethren, it's just generic word. Um, and speaking to all of us, I count not myself to have apprehended, 
But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You cannot change yesterday. At some point, you got to put yesterday behind you. You ever seen somebody driving looking at the rear view mirror? No, you, you might glance. But ain't much driving going on forward looking through the rear view mirror. And let me say this. I can't, I can't help. You, you, let, let me say it a different way. Your life is your life. But the Lord's decision is the Lord's decision. And there's no one, there's no one that can do anything about that. Oh, bless his name. Psalm 51, David says, against you and you only have I sinned. Not that our, our trespasses against others don't matter. They do matter. And they do carry consequences sometimes that the Lord calls us to suffer through. Amen. The person who, who takes the life of another, uh, uh, David Berkowitz and others, many have received Christ behind prison walls. Amen. And may have to live the rest of their life behind prison walls. But, but when you have a relationship with Jesus, amen, I, I'm his prisoner. I, we, you happen to not be incarcerated. You are his freeman. In every situation, no, nobody can take away what the Lord has done. And people may not forgive you, but you, but, but, but you got to take, you have to take what the Lord has done. You have to take his forgiveness. You have to take his grace. When you talking about keeping your eyes, your eyes on Jesus. Not once does the Bible shy away from David's sins. Not once. Matthew chapter 1 in the gospel. Solomon was born of Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite. You, 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 the Bible don't, the Bible don't shy away. But, but it also does not keep David solely captive to his sins. And you ought to thank God tonight. Because you know what? We sing the songs, but, but, but those songs have meaning. That his, his blood, it flows to the what? To the lowest valley. But also can, can go to the highest mountain. The late, the late uh, Clay Evans, there is room at the cross. There is room at the cross for you. Though millions have come, there is still room. And, and just like the Apostle Paul, the Lord gives us witnesses. There's a, there's a thief that is on the cross. There is a thief there. When you enter into your kingdom, remember me. When you, when you enter into your kingdom, re remember me. You, you cannot help the Lord's grace on your life. Now, I will say this. God does not save us and give us grace to continue in sin. God does not give us grace and mercy to continue to be slaves of unrighteousness. Don't, don't, don't make sin okay. Okay. You got to continue to let it bother your soul. Forgive me, Lord. I'm wrong, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me for this, Lord. I'm struggling with this, Lord. Deliver me, Lord. If you confess, with, if you, if you confess your sins, uh, 1 John 1 and 9, he is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And so, and so the Apostle Paul already is acknowledging here that I have not attained, neither am I perfect, but I'm pressing toward the mark. I got to I got to put those things that are behind behind me. And that works both ways you all. Sometimes you you can be down talking about the good old days. You can be down talking about what you did what you did on yesterday. 
It's today, today. Let today be the day. Let honor God today. Be seeking Christ today. Be faithful today. Put those things that are are behind are, that are behind you. And when he presses it there in verse 14, that I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling and reaching forth, the, the illusion there is, is a runner. And a, a runner in the, the ancient Greco-Roman Roman culture of, 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 of Olympic kind of, of competition and atmosphere. And, and, and many of us, we, we are, we are, we are caught up in the, the, uh, the games. I forget, I, I guess the Olympics is, uh, is coming up, coming up soon. Is it next year? Coming up soon. And uh, I saw the Shikari Richardson, amen, the young lady, that she's been doing really good. But, but one thing they teach runners is the job of the runner is not to focus on the opponent. You'll lose a whole lot of races looking at what other people are doing. But keeping your eyes ahead, keeping your eyes on the prize, keeping your eyes on Jesus keeping your eyes uh, on the finish line. Not what's beside you and certainly not what's behind you. Oh, Lord, have mercy. And again, you can't help God's grace on your life. That, that's what ought to make your shout bigger. That's what ought to make your worship bigger. That's what ought to make your praise bigger because you know where the Lord has brought you through. You know what the Lord has done in your life. You, you know what he's done. And so you don't live by ego, you live by, you live by grace. That's why some, some of us some of us today, you, we're not being fully honest about what the Lord has done in our lives. If it had not been for the Lord on our side. Watch this. In, um, I want to say, Luke, Luke 13, Luke 7, uh, uh, Jesus talked about the woman that, 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 washed his, her, his feet with her hair. And Jesus said, when I came in to the, to the lawyer, he says, when I came in, <laughs> you didn't wipe my feet. When, you, didn't, you, you didn't give me no meat. You you, when I came in, you didn't. You, but this, this woman, because whoever's been forgiven much, loveth much. And sometimes while we are tapping in, like I said, you certainly don't want to look behind, but you got to qu quit looking beside you as well. Sometimes we have built our ego and, 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 and can't get past ourselves because you're too busy comparing yourself to other people. Either you think you're better than others or you're not, you're not but, but you got to take the grace that the Lord gives you. Lord have mercy. I'm, a, I'm just like the apostle, but I caught not myself to have apprehended. I, I, you, are talk, you are looking at a pastor that has not arrived. I, I, am, I am on this journey just like you. And Lord have mercy. There are things in my life I regret. There's some things in my life, ways I've treated people, ways that I dishonored the Lord in my life, ways that, that and, and my, my heart just says, Lord have mercy. And I remember on one occasion, I had an old employer, and my old employer walked into church one day. That's why you got to be careful how you live. You never know who's watching you. You never know who's around you. And my my my. My uh, old employer, uh, I didn't know she was a believer like that, but she was a, she was a believer. And she said, John, what are you doing in church? <laughs> I'm the preacher's son, too. But I had to look at Sally. I said, Sally, I'm a, I'm a different person now. I'm, I'm not that John you knew. Uh, that, that, that wasn't right. And just because I wasn't right, whatever you think of me has no bearing on what the Lord thinks of me. You, you, you might not receive this, but you are free in the Holy Ghost. You are free in the Lord. Whom the Son makes free, is sets free, is free indeed. You, you are free. But you look like living under somebody else's thumb, like you don't deserve it. And, and, and the Lord above, the God in heaven, amen, the King of kings, who, who reigns supreme over all, has set you free, has paid for your, has paid for your deeds, paid for your sins, has, has paid your ransom. 
you can't help the grace that the Lord gives to you. All you can do is rejoice in it and make the most of it. Now watch this, this is the next part of the lesson, 15 through 19. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. If in anything otherwise, be otherwise minded. God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, where to we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which, which walk so as ye have us for an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. So here we are, we make a decision, set apart, make a decision, Lord, I, I want to keep my eyes on you. Lord, I want you, I want you to have the priority in my life. I want you to be first in my life. I want to be honest, I'm going to keep it real. That's my goal, that's my aim, but I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. But, but, but I, I'm going to be moving forward. I'm going to be moving forward. And a part of moving forward is doing the things you know how to do. Some of us want to be hit on the head. I wonder what my purpose is. That's important. I'm not saying that's important. But, but there's some purposes that you ought to already fulfill, and you, you, you don't need a whole bunch of enlightenment. You don't need a whole bunch of enlightenment that you need to pray. You need to pray. You ain't got no other prayer if every day when you wake up in your, in your goings, I'm going to pray the Lord's Prayer. You, 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 you got enough knowledge. There's some things you should do, some things you shouldn't do. You, you, you shouldn't make things up about people. You shouldn't take what somebody else said, carry it to that person. That, no, you, you, should, you shouldn't harm your neighbor. You already know you shouldn't steal. You, you already know you shouldn't lie. You already know you are, you are amen. You, you, there's a lot of things we, we already got. If you can be faithful with what you already know, what you already know, Lord have mercy. <laughs> you already know you should be on time for things. Lord, amen, lights. You should be on time. Amen, lights. Amen, amen, lights. Live up to what you already know. So, some folk talk about, you know, I would read the Bible, but it's hard to understand. Amen? Well, start with what you do understand. Uh, it, uh, Mark Twain used to have a quote. It's not what I don't understand about the Bible that scares me. It's what I do. It's what I, what I, already, what I already know. I already, I don't know everything, but one thing I know that you, you shouldn't play with God. One thing I already know, you, 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 shouldn't, you shouldn't play with the Lord. One of the earliest lessons many of us got, you pray for your food. You thank God for your food. You bless your food. How much gratitude have you had towards the Lord today? Have you thanked him for waking you up today? Have you thanked him for starting you on your way? Have you thanked him for the regulation of your mind? Have you thanked him that you woke up in your own home? Have you thanked him? But even the other things that, that, that you want to know, even the other things that, that are not clear, God in his own time will, will reveal it unto you. God in his own time will bring clarity. God in his own time will bring, will bring peace unto you in those other matters. But a whole lot of us would do well by just living up to what you already know. As if you need some special knowledge to, if any young people, to honor your mother and father. You, you, need, you need some special knowledge to give honor and obey your teacher. The book of the Paul, I started off with this, defining you an example. Mark, mark them that you have an example. Lord, who, who's, who's, who's trying to live their life right? Not, not, not perfect, but who who has their eyes on the Lord? Who 
Who is, who is making the Lord a priority in their life? Who, who is keeping the Lord first in their life and, 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 and making the Lord an example? And, and you can tell that by how they deal with other believers. You can tell that by how they deal, amen, with people in the world. A whole lot of people do well with their friends, but can't do well with other people. They can do well with people who stroke their ego, who make them feel great. But they, but they, but they, they, but, but, but mark those who. And when Paul opens this letter, Philippians chapter one, he he says, he says, only thing I care about is that Christ be preached. Some <laughs> some have taken advantage of me, amen. Some have some some have some have misused me. But as long as Christ be preached. That, that, kind of, that kind of commitment, because whatever other people are doing, it does not cancel. There's nothing that anybody can do that can cancel out the Lord's agenda. Nobody else's agenda is bigger than God's agenda. That doesn't mean that sometimes what we deal with in life doesn't hurt, doesn't have difficulty. But you know what? Some way, somehow, the Lord is teaching us something. The Lord is delivering us something. The Lord is making us a witness of something. Because watch this, if you don't have an example, somebody's going to be your example. Somebody's going to be your example. This is why you have to be careful in the church what you say. That our, our church ain't no good. Well, you can say that, and some people may be handling it, understand what you mean. Other people hear that, help me somebody, and sometimes we have ruined, we have ruined the faith and witness and experience of others because we think everybody can handle. You can take a drink and it don't bother you. Somebody else will take a drink, amen, and they're trying to numb the pain and they, they can't let it go. You can have a good time. Help me somebody. You, 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 you have to be careful who you put in front of you. How can you fly with eagles and you hang it with turkeys? You, you, and watch this, you all. He, he says there, he says, for many walking whom I told you often, I'll tell you even weeping, that they, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. See, remember, we, we, we had already said it, that, that our, our, our priority is Christ. But you have a whole world, and sadly, even in the church, when the Apostle Paul is writing here, he is talking about religious people who claim to have a relationship with Lord, with the Lord, so misguided. That's, that's why, let me say this, that's why when it is an, an, an example, it ain't how well they preach as far as their oracle skills. Some people, some people got the greatest oracle skills and will bust hell wide open. Oh, they, they, can, they can sing like an angel, but they, they just, help me somebody, Satan, <laughs> Lucifer could, could sing well. Lucifer was music, but cast out. Don't, don't be so caught up. And sometimes my greatest hurt in as a pastor and as a minister of the gospel and as a been a part of the church is people who will take the form of godliness but only to the extent uh, to, its earth, to its earthliness. A crowded church don't mean that God is glorified. Ne neither, neither is an empty church as well. <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make is Paul says you want people people who have modeled this example. Modeled the Philippians 3 and 7, the Philippians 3 and 10, that I counted all loss, that, that, I, that I really want to know the Lord. I want to love like him, be like him. Because there's some people who are like sheep in wolf's clothing, who are wolves in sheep's clothing. They look one way on the outside, but 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 really, they they could they they could care less about your soul. They could care less about your relationship with Jesus. They could care less about their relationship with the Lord. 
Just fine being a hypocrite. Just fine being a performer. You ought, and maybe some days in your faith walk, you, but you ought to be tired of being a performer. Shirley Caesar tells a testimony. She said, she said her and her friends or her brother or whoever, they were out in the backyard and were playing church. She said one day the Lord got a, got a hold of her, couldn't play church no more. Yeah, there are people who, who use this gospel. He says, he says who, who, who's, whose God is their belly. Whose God is their belly. The, 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 the gospel is nothing more than a, than a meal ticket. Y'all don't, y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. I, I, ain't, trying to, I ain't trying to be mean. But, but focus show up when the church is doing something for them. Focus, Lord have mercy. Don't, don't have no usefulness for the church. No usefulness, no, no commitment to the Lord. But if the church is, y'all don't hear me today. Sometimes it, it, it take your loved one to die to get folk to come to church. Your glory is in their, in their shame. You worship in the wrong thing. Well, that's just where he closes. We made a decision. Christ is our priority. Christ is first. I want to grow in that knowledge. I have not arrived, but I'm pressing forward. I'm going to start with what I have, what I already know. I'm going to associate with myself with, with those who will, who will help me in that way. That's going to start to be, become my company. That's why you need to be in church. That's why you need a church home. That's why you need a church family. Yeah, we're a bunch of imperfect people. I'd rather go to heaven with some of them than hell with all of them. Somebody said. And uh, I thank God, Sister, Sister Gail, she always reminded me, you, go, you go wherever church you want to go in this, in this world, wherever you want to go. You can go to Winner's Chapel, the largest indoor sanctuary in the world. They got about 100,000 seats in there. I guarantee you by the time, you know, I don't care where you go, you're going you're gonna to run into it. But you, you, you need a church home. Because as we started, we are on a journey. He said, for our conversation, that's King James, but that word conversation means our citizenship. Our, our residence, when we keep our hygiene, our, we, we, we are just strangers passing through. From whom also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. That's the reason you want to keep your eyes on the Lord, because he's able, he has the preeminence over all things. In him we move and have our being. He is before all things. He is above all things. Why, why, why make Christ low and positionally he is high above the earth? Why make him low when one day every knee will t- bow and every tongue will confess? Our citizenship is, is in heaven. It is, it is with him. And our foreparents had a song. Let Jesus lead. Let Jesus lead. All the way. All the way from earth to heaven. Let Jesus lead you all the way. Father heaven, we thank you today. Lord, we thank you for your saving power. We thank you for your grace. Thank you for your word. Forgive us, Lord. Cleanse us. Refresh us. May we make you our prize. May we be honest about where we are and honest about what we know. May we be faithful to what we know. Lord, may we stay in right company. Thank you for your church. Thank you for Jerusalem. Thank you for believers. Thank you for family members and friends who've been a shining witness and example in our lives. Lord, we thank you today. Thank you for what you have prepared for us. 
as you take us from one good degree unto another, as we are changed from glory to glory, as we behold your image and your faith and your face. Lord, may we love like you. May we obey like you. May we humble ourselves like you. May we submit like you. May we heal like you. May we transform those around us like you. May we be a light like you. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless everybody.